long until it's eating its way across your country and beyond. Kendall had feared such an outcome, but now to hear it come true. But there's no way to kill him, Kendall admitted in a hushed, frightened voice. I tried everything. Ah, that's because you are locked inside a box. Carter tapped his own skull. Sometimes you must crack that shell of established scientific dogma. Look for new or creative solutions. In fact, I'm surprised you didn't figure it out yourself by now. It's been staring you and Professor Harrington in the face this entire time. Carter's words left little doubt that he knew about Harrington's work. But every statement of hope died a little more inside of him. What do you want in exchange for this cure? Kendall asked. Only your cooperation, nothing more. Well, I was able to recreate that clever viral shell of yours. I continued to fail to fill it, to turn that empty shell into a living organism. Kendall understood his frustration. It had taken his team years of trial and error to come up with that process. Afterward, he refined it personally kept the technique guarded forever. What weakened his knees now was the fear of what Cutter intended to seed into that viral shell that he planned to unleash upon the world. Cutter must have read the trepidation in his eyes and looked upon. I swear that what I intend to do will not kill a single human being or creature on this planet. Kendall wanted to doubt his honesty. He knew Cutter was a man of his word. He had a strange sense of honor in that regard. But if you don't cooperate with every passing hour, the situation will grow worse in California. Soon it may grow beyond even my cure to resolve. Help me save the world. Refuse and the world die by your own hands, by your own creation will be your legacy. You swear you have a cure? Cutter kept his palm up, staring him in the eye. I do. And I've tested it. It will work. Like I said, there may be limitations if you wait too long. But if I cooperate, you'll give me this cure. Let me share it with the proper authorities. Oh well, I have no desire to see your creation rank in such havoc to stop it as much as you do. Kendall believed him. Despite his dark turn, Cutter remained an environmentalist. He would not want to see the world die, still. Then why did you sabotage my lab? Kendall asked, some of the heat re-entering his voice. Why kill everyone? Let that virus loose. Cutter stared at him as though the answer was self-evident. Kendall suddenly understood quailed at the sheer audacity of this man. You did all of that as simple leverage, didn't you? To get me to reveal what I know. See, my dear friend, Cutter said, turning away, we're already thinking outside the box. Now let's get to work. But after taking a couple of steps, a cell phone rang from the pocket of Cutter's cigar. He plucked it out and spoke briefly of what must be the McCoy.